Jerkins, and I am excited to celebrate 50 years of Toni Morrison's Bluest Eye, which feels especially relevant to us in 2020 because we are still dealing with the precarious position that Black girls and women occupy in society, socioeconomically, and especially psychologically. As you know, this is a read-along. I'll share some brief reflections after I read my section. Catch the full reading on the gram at love is a kind of cure or parentheses at love kind cure and parentheses. Okay, here's my reading. Three quarts of milk. That's what was in that ice box yesterday. Three whole quarts. Now they ain't none, not a drop. I don't mind folks coming in and getting what they want, but three quarts of milk? What the devil does anybody need with three quarts of milk? The folks my mother was referring to was Piccola. The three of us, Piccola, Frida, and I, listened to her downstairs in the kitchen fussing about the amount of milk Piccola had drunk. We knew she was fond of the Shirley Temple cup and took every opportunity to drink milk out of it just to handle and see sweet Shirley's face. My mother knew that Frida and I hated milk and assumed Piccola drank it out of greediness. It was certainly not for us to dispute her. We didn't initiate talk with grown-ups. We answered their questions. Ashamed of the insults that were being heaped on our friend, we just sat there. I picked toe jam. Frida cleaned her fingernails with her teeth and Piccola finger traced some scars on her knee, her head cocked to one side. My mother's fussing soliloquies always irritated and depressed us. They were interminable, insulting, and although indirect, mama never at named anybody, just talked about folks and some people, extremely painful in their thrust. She would go on like that for hours, connecting one offense to another until all of the things that chagrined her were spewed out. Then, having told everybody and everything off, she would burst into song and sing the rest of the day. But it was such a long time before the singing part came. In the meantime, our stomachs jellying and our necks burning, we listened, avoided each other's eyes and picked toe jam or whatever. I didn't know what I'm supposed to be running here. A charity ward, I guess? Time for me to get out of the giving line and get in the getting line. I guess I ain't supposed to have nothing I'm supposed to end up in the poor house. Look like nothing I do is gonna keep me out of there. Folks just spend all their time trying to figure out ways to send me to the poor house. I got about as much business with another mouth to feed as a cat has with side pockets. As if I don't have trouble enough trying to feed my own and keep out the poor house, now I got something else in here that's just going to drink me on in there. Well, no, nah, she ain't. Not long as I got strength in my body and a tongue in my head, there's a limit to everything. I ain't got nothing to just throw away. Don't nobody need three quarts of milk. Henry Ford don't need three quarts of milk. That's just downright sinful. I'm gonna do what I can for folks. Can't nobody say I ain't. But this has got to stop and I'm just the one to stop it. Bible say watch as well as pray. Folks just dump their children on you and go on about their business. Ain't nobody even peeped in here to see whether that child has a loaf of bread Looked like they would just peep in to see whether I had a loaf of bread to give her. But no, nah, that thought don't cross their mind. That old trifling Choli been out of jail two whole days and ain't been here yet to see his own child was live or dead. She could be dead for all he know. And that mama neither. What kind of something is that? When mama got around to Henry Ford and all those people who didn't care whether she had a loaf of bread, it was time to go. We wanted to miss that part about Roosevelt and the CCC camps. Frida got up and started down the stairs. Pickle and I followed, making a wide arc to avoid the kitchen doorway. We sat on the steps of the porch where my mother's words could reach us only in spurts. It was a lonesome Saturday. The house smelled of Fels Nipa and the sharp odor of mustard greens cooking. 
Saturdays were lonesome, fussy, soapy days, second in misery only to those tight, starchy, cough drop Sundays, so full of don'ts and set yourselves down. If my mother was in a singing mood, it wasn't so bad. She would sing about hard times, bad times, somebody done gone and left me times. But her voice was so sweet and her singing eyes so melty, I found myself longing for those hard times, yearning to be grown without a thin dime to my name. I looked forward to the delicious time when my man would leave me, when I would hate to see that evening sun go down, cause then I would know my man has left this town. Misery colored by the greens and blues and my mother's voice took all of the grief out of the words and left me with a conviction that pain was not only endurable, it was sweet. But without song, those Sundays sat on my head like a cold scuttle. And if mama was fussing as she was now, it was like somebody throwing stones at it. And here I am poor as a bowl of yak me. What do they think I am? Some kind of Sandy Claus? Well, they could just take their stocking down because it ain't Christmas. We fidgeted. Let's do something, Frida said. What do you want to do, I asked. I don't know. Nothing. Frida stared at the tops of the trees. Piccola looked at her feet. You want to go up to Mr. Henry's room and look at his girly magazines? Frida made an ugly face. She didn't like to look at dirty pictures. Well, I continued, we could look at his Bible. That's pretty. Frida sucked her teeth and made a pfft sound with her lips. Okay, then. We can go thread needles for the half-blind lady. She'll give us a penny. Frida snorted. Her eyes look like snot. I don't feel like looking at them. What do you want to do, Frida? I don't care, she said. Anything you want. I had another idea. We can go up the alley and see what's in the trash cans. Too cold, said Frida. She was bored and irritable. I know, we could make some fudge. You kidding? With mama in there fussing? When she starts fussing at the walls, you know she's gonna be at it all day. She won't even let us. Well, let's go over to the Greek hotel and listen to them cuss. Oh, who wants to do that? Besides, they say the same old words all the time. My supply of ideas exhausted, I began to concentrate on the white spots on my fingernails. The total signified the number of boyfriends I would have. Seven. Mama soliloquy slid into the silence. Bible say feed the hungry. That's fine. That's all right. But I ain't feeding no elephants. Ain't no, anybody need three quarts of milk to live need to get out of here. They in the wrong place. What is this? Some kind of dairy farm? Suddenly, Piccola bolted straight up, her eyes wide with terror. A whinnying sound came from her mouth. What's the matter with you? Frida stood up to. Then we both looked where Piccola was staring. Blood was running down her legs. Some drops were on the steps. I leaped up. Hey, you cut yourself. Look, it's all over your dress. A brownish red stain discolored the back of her dress. She kept whin whin whinnying, standing with her legs far apart. Frida said, oh, Lordy, I know. I know what that is. What? Piccola's fingers went to her mouth. That's ministrating. What's that? You know. Am I going to die, she asked. No, you won't die. Just means you can have a baby. What? How do you know? I was sick and tired of Frida knowing everything. Mildred told me, and Mama too. I don't believe it. You don't have to, dummy. Look, wait here. Sit down, Piccola, right here. Frida was all authority and zest. And you, she said to me, you go get some water. Water? Yes, stupid, water. And be quiet or Mama will hear you. Piccola sat down again, a little less fear in her eyes. I went into the kitchen. What you want, girl? Mama was rinsing curtains in the kit in the sink. Some water, ma'am. Right where I'm working, naturally. Well, get a glass, not no clean one neither. Use that jar. I got a mason jar and filled it with water from the faucet. It seemed a long time filling. Don't nobody never want none till they see me at the sink. Then everybody gotta drink water. When the jar was full, I moved to leave the room. Where you going? Outside. Drink that water right here. I ain't gonna break nothing. I don't know what you gonna do. Yes, ma'am, I do. Let me take it out, I won't spill none. You bet not. I got to the porch and stood there with the mason jar of water. 
Piccolo was crying. What you crying for? Does it hurt? She shook her head. Then stop slinging snot. Frida opened the back door. She had something tucked in her blouse. She looked at me in amazement and pointed to the jar. What's that supposed to do? You told me. You said get some water. Not a little old jar full. Lots of water to scrub the steps with dumbbell. How was I supposed to know? Yeah, how was you? Come on. She pulled Pickle up by the arm. Let's go back here. They headed for the side of the house where the bushes were thick. Hey, what about me? I want to go. Shut up, Frida Stage whispered. Mama will hear you. You watch the steps. They disappeared around the corner of the house. I was going to miss something again. And here was something important, and I had to stay behind and not see any of it. I poured the water on the steps and sloshed it with my shoe and ran to join them. Frida was on her knees. A white rectangle of cotton was near her on the ground. She was pulling Piccola's pants off. Come on, step out of them. She managed to get the soiled pants down and flung them at me. Here. What am I supposed to do with these? Bury them, moron. Frida told Piccola to hold the cotton thing between her legs. How's she going to walk like that, I asked. Frida didn't answer. Instead, she took two safety pins from the hem of her skirt and began to pin the ends of the napkin to Piccola's dress. I picked up the pants with two fingers and looked about for something to dig a hole with. A rustling noise in the bushes startled me, and turning toward I saw a pair of fascinated eyes and a doe white face. Rosemary was watching us. I grabbed for her face and conceded in scratching her nose. She screamed and jumped back. Mrs. McTeer, Mrs. McTeer, Rosemary hollered. Friend Frida and Claudia are out here playing nasty. Mrs. McTeer. Mama opened the window and looked down at us. What? They're playing nasty, Mrs. McTeer. Look, and Claudia hit me because I seen them. Mama slammed the window shut and came running out the back door. What you all doing? Oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Playing nasty, huh? She reached into the bushes and pulled the off a switch. I'd rather raise pigs than some nasty girls, lest I can slaughter them. We began to shriek, no, mama, no, ma'am, we wasn't, she's a liar, no, ma'am, mama, no, ma ma'am, mama. Mama grabbed Frida by the shoulder and turned her around and gave her three or four stinging cuts on her legs. Gonna be nasty, huh? No, nah, you ain't. Frida was destroyed. Whippings wounded and insulted her. Mama looked at Piccola. You too, she said. Child of mine or not. She grabbed Piccola and spun her around. The safety pin snapped open on one end of the napkin and Mama saw it fall from under her dress. The switch hovered in the air while Mama blinked. What the devil is going on here? Frida was sobbing. I next in line began to explain. She was bleeding. We was just trying to stop the blood. Mama looked at Frida for verification. Frida nodded. She's ministrating. We was just helping. Mama released Pickle and stood looking at her. Then she pulled both of them toward her, their heads against her stomach. Her eyes were sorry. All right, all right, now stop crying. I didn't know. Come on now. Get on in the house. Go on home, Rosemary. The show is over. We trooped in. Frida sobbing quietly, Piccola carrying a white tail, me carrying the little girl gone to woman pants. Mama led us to the bathroom. She prodded Piccola inside and, taking the underwear from me, told us to stay out. We could hear water running into the bathtub. You think she's going to drown her? Oh, Claudia, you so dumb. She's just going to wash her clothes and all. Should we beat up Rosemary? No, leave her alone. The water gushed, and over its gushing, we could hear the music of my mother's laughter. That night in bed, the three of us lay still. We were full of awe and respect for Piccola. Lying next to a real person who was really ministrating was somehow sacred. She was different from us now, grown up like. She, herself, felt the distance but refused to lord it over us. After a long while, she spoke very softly. Is it true that I can have a baby now? Sure, said Frida drowsily. Sure you can. But how? Her voice was hollow with wonder. Oh, said Frida, somebody has to love you. Oh. There was a long pause in which Pickle and I thought this over. It would involve, I supposed, my man, who before leaving me would love me. But there weren't any babies in the songs my mother sang. Maybe that's why the women were sad. The men left before they could make a baby. Then Piccola asked a question that had never entered my mind. How do you do that? I mean, how do you get somebody to love you? But Frida was asleep, and I didn't know. Thank you.
I think the words of love or practical wisdom I would offer to Pickla is to remind her how beautiful she is and to inundate her life with images of other black girls and women so that she understands that and that she really absorbs it. 2020 has been a big year for us, right? And I feel like Toni Morrison offers us guidance because she lets us know that the intimate lives of black girls, black women too, but specifically black girls is so sacred because they are the future. They're our future geniuses, our innovators, our creators, our politicians, our leaders. And I think that Toni Morrison helps us guide us through these pandemics to let us know that injustice is not new. Injustice is always happening, both on global and microscopic scales. Thank you for listening, reading along with me. Before I sign off, um, let me offer a word of gratitude for Toni Morrison. Thank you, Toni Morrison, for your genius, for your imagination, for your courage, and for your insistence upon centering black lives and letting the world know that we are our own universe. Thank you. Get, 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 get